Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out 64-bit emulation on the latest Windows 10 on ARM on the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's get started. Now before I begin, I don't normally do crazy updates on the Windows 10 Raspberry Pi in general unless there's like some crazy update or some cool things that just happened and this by far is another cool thing that just recently happened now microsoft just recently released a brand new build version which is 21277 which now supports x64 bit emulation now not only are we allowed to install arm applications x86 applications now x64 applications which means we're on our way to getting a fully utilizable windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi or ARM devices. And that's what we're gonna be checking out right now. So to install this onto the Raspberry Pi, I'm not gonna go crazy detail onto this, but you do need the software called Windows on Raspberry Pi. Once you do that, follow the instructions and you come to this one section that says UUP, and that's where you're gonna download the ISO image. From there, you need to get the insider version with the build version number 21277. Once you get the ISO from that, follow the on-screen instructions, then burn it onto your SD card or your USB. Now, the current setup that I'm using right now is a Raspberry Pi 8 gigabyte with the DeskPi Pro and the SSD installed. Now, I do have my wires connected so it's using USB 2 instead of the USB 3 because USB 3 is not fully supported by Raspberry Pi or Windows 10. So you do have to use the USB 2 factor, but still much faster than SD card. So I would highly recommend going that route. If you have any more questions, you could always go to the Windows on Raspberry Pi Discord, which I'll leave a link down in the description below. On there, you can get slimmed down versions that will actually make this a lot faster. But the version that I am using is just standard right out of the box. Whatever you would get from Microsoft, nothing deleted or deep bloated or anything. Now booting into the machine, I do have a couple of things that I have installed, which is Discord, Microsoft Teams, and it does boot up along with the computer. I just left it and installed anything that I would like I normally would on a normal Windows 10 PC. So to jump into it now, after everything's all booted up, you could see I have my desktop icons. I am running on 720 because it's just a little bit easier for you guys to view. Now I normally do install a software called Chocolate and that's my software installer or package manager for Windows. So if I needed to install say 7-Zip or Acrobat Reader, I could just select it from here and install it so if you guys haven't seen my previous videos on this go check it out this is a very good installer and it works on raspberry pi now or windows 10 on arm now i did install a couple of 64-bit applications on here like the acrobat or 7-zip installer and if you were to check it out um, i could actually show you where is it acrobat reader and it actually runs pretty fast like it almost seems like it's native speed I booted right up. I clicked on it. I'm not even fast forwarding anything from this point on. I'm just going to let programs run now. Okay. I'm going to say no for default applications, but you could see it booted right up and started right away. If I was to say, use another application, say like uh, Microsoft teams, I don't have anything signed on, but something like this works as well as zoom. Uh, while I have that booting up, let me pop over to task manager and show you guys what's going on now. For some odd reason, Microsoft Teams and Discord does run slow because I think it's using some sort of wrapper that goes through a browser. Don't quote me on that, but I think those are the only two applications I do have problems running a little bit slow. But otherwise, um, a lot of things run normal. Now I do have the eight gigabyte of RAM that I am using, the USB disk. Uh, I did overclock to two gigahertz, which is not needed. Uh, it does run pretty good on 1.5, but that little extra push does help a little. So I did overclock it to 2.0. And yeah, here you go, Microsoft Teams. I'm, like I said, I'm not signed in. Uh, if I want to pop into Discord, I might have Discord running right here. So yeah, Discord works. Uh, you need to sign in as well. I'm gonna close that out. And other applications that you might notice. Now, one thing I did have a problem with was installing Microsoft Office 2019. Uh, 2019 would install but get frozen halfway i read online how to fix it and it has to do with some sort of windows update so i didn't want to go through too much crazy things to try to figure it out so i didn't install windows 2019 but i did install office 2013. office 2016 did not install at all it just gave me an error message and wouldn't install but since office 13 works i decided to play around with this and if i was to go into microsoft word and this is the 64-bit version of it and it runs pretty quick like it's booting up like normal it's actually faster than some laptops that i actually tested this on before but yeah um this works pretty well i can go into a blank document 
Uh, it's not registered. I didn't, you know, put any keys or anything in there. And you see, if I'm just going through the menus, it's pretty quick. If I go into account, it's not activated. It doesn't show me it's 64 bit, but I know I did install the 64 bit version. Moving on. Everything seems to be working. Uh, this is 120 gigabyte SSD that I have installed. Um, I did install a software that someone, some a viewer of mine that always comments if this will work, which is Meta Trader 5. And because it's 64 bit and it only works off Windows, I tried it. And I gotta say, it does work. It installs just fine. Everything loads up. I don't have an account with them, but you could still see the data coming in. So I, I'm, I'm just going to let this load. So yeah, that's it. Look, you can see this trading. Everything works on this screen. So for you, whoever, I, I can't remember your name, but I know you were asking. It does work on when, uh, Raspberry Pi now. I also did install the latest Microsoft Edge, which is their Chrome browser, a Chromium browser and it works pretty well. Now, keep in mind, things that don't work on Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi right now is Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and sound. So we don't have the drivers for the audio, so you have to use something like this, which is an external USB sound card thing that you could plug in. Uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is not gonna work because we don't have drivers for that, so you're gonna have to use your own extra dongle as well. And those are the things that I know that doesn't work and another thing is graphic drivers, but graphic drivers are in the works. I, I hear that the framework is being in place, but uh, we don't have any graphic drivers yet. But once that does come in, this is going to be a game changer because we'll be able to play Steam games and all that stuff on the Raspberry Pi. But for now, yeah, you can see Chromium works. Uh, if I pop over to YouTube, it loads pretty well. I mean, it's the same amount of uh, delay I would find when I'm using Chromium on Raspberry Pi or uh, OS, but ultimately it, it scrolls, it works, the browser works fine. Uh, the only thing, like I said, the sound doesn't work. Um, native apps like Visual Studio Code works pretty good. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of the native apps, ARM 64-bit apps, they work really well. They actually boot up fast, they open fast. It's only, like I said, the Discord and the Teams where they have like a wrapper and stuff like that. Those are the ones that take forever to load. Uh, another thing I did notice is anytime that I try to run any administrative programs like PowerShell or something like that, it does have a lag to open. So if I was to open, say, uh, PowerShell, uh, let's see, PowerShell, right here and if i run as administrator yes it does take a while to load like this will stay here for a while before it starts to load same thing with uh chocolate uh this is a uh, administrative program so it took me forever just to boot it up that's why i had to pre-boot it as already and other applications like uh notepad plus plus this is a 64-bit application i installed and it seems to run really, really well. With 8 gigs of RAM, uh, you are able to actually multitask a little bit on this guy. Uh, the only stopping point is your CPU at this because I'm emulating 64 bits, so I'm actually emulating a lot of stuff. Oh, another thing that I did notice is it fully utilizes all four cores, uh, whether it's x86 emulation or 64-bit emulation, which is pretty cool. Now, I did try to do Cinebench on this, but it took an hour or something, so I actually closed it before it even finished it. But someone in the Windows for Raspberry Pi Discord did run the entire bench, and the scores were 193, which I'll put a screenshot right here. That's pretty impressive because I see some Atom chips that only could do 163. So this is actually, on a benchmark, outperforming uh, Intel Atom Z8350 chips. Anyway, with this latest Windows 10 update, it is super impressive because now we can run the 64-bit application. So there's really not much stopping it now. It's just a matter of what we can throw at it. So I'm able to actually make this into a little server, run little applications that I want to run 24 hours a day. I don't know. It's definitely getting to the point where we could use this more and more. Now, again, I do highly recommend running it off a USB instead of the SD card because the USB will run at least five times faster than the SD card read and write speed. And I do highly recommend trying to get 4 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM because, you know, Windows is resource hungry. So 
If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this or any applications you want me to try since I have it all set up, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer you guys in the community post. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.